if you could go back to that moment and show someone ChatGPT today, to say nothing of Codex or anything else, but just ChatGPT, uh, I think most people would say that's AGI for sure. So the CEO of OpenAI, Sam Altman, just made an appearance at the 2025 Snowflake Summit. And he pretty much lays out where the AI industry is heading next. He talks about the kinds of capabilities we could see in the next few years, gives his timeline for AGI, and even shares his long-term vision for what AI models might eventually become. Let's get into it. So first up, the moderator of the interview, Sarah Guo, who's also the founder of venture capitalist firm Conviction, asks both Sam Altman and Sridhar Wamaswamy, CEO of Snowflake, what advice you would give to enterprise leaders today? And how does that advice differ from what you would have told them a year ago? Here's Sam's response. Interestingly, I, I, I wouldn't have quite said the same thing last year. Um, I would have said the same thing to a startup last year, but to like a big enterprise, I would have say like I, I would say like ah, uh, you know, you can experiment a little bit, but this is maybe not totally ready for production use in most cases, and that has really changed. Our enterprise business has gone like this, and we talk to big companies who are now like really using us for a lot of stuff, and say like, what's so different? And and, and we're like, did it just take you a while to figure it out? And they say, that was part of it, but it just works so much more reliably. It works, you know, it can do all these things that I just didn't think were going to be possible. And it does, it does seem like sometime over the last year, we hit a real inflection point for the usability of these models. Now, an interesting question is what will we say differently next year? Um, and I think we'll be at the point next year where you can not only use a system to sort of automate some business processes or build these new products and services, but you can really say, I have this hugely important problem in my business. I will throw a ton of compute at it if you can solve it. And the models will be able to go figure out things that teams of people on their own can't do. And the companies that are, have gotten experience with these models are well positioned for a world where they can say, okay, you know, AI system, whatever, go, you know, like redo my most critical project and here's a ton of compute, think really hard, just figure out the answer. People who are ready for that, I think we'll have a, another big step change next year. So yeah, this isn't surprising, especially with all the recent warnings from people like Dario Amode about the incoming entry-level job disruption. These models are finally becoming reliable enough that large enterprises feel comfortable using them at scale. And if that momentum continues, it's not hard to see where this is heading. We're still in the very early stages of enterprise adoption. Now, in this next clip, they get a bit more specific. Altman starts talking about what agents might actually be capable of in the next few years. Take a look. Sam, is there a framework you can give every leader here to think about like what can agents do today and next year? Um, I mean, the, the coding agent we just launched called Codex has been one of my like field AGI moments. You like watch this thing, you can give it a bunch of tasks, it goes and works in the background, it, it's really quite smart, it can do these long horizon things, and then you get to just sit there and say yes to this one, no to that one, try again. And it is able to just kind of like connect to your GitHub and you know, at some point it'll be able to also watch your meetings if you want and look at your Slack and read all your internal documents and it's just doing incredibly impressive stuff. And you know, maybe today it is like a sort of intern that can work for a couple of hours, but at some point it'll be like an experienced software engineer that can work for days. And then we'll see this for many other categories of work. And so you see, you hear from companies that are building agents to automate most of their customer support or their outbound sales or any number of other things. And you hear people that talk about their job now is to assign work to a bunch of agents, um, look at the quality, figure out how it fits together, give feedback. And it sounds a lot like how they'd work with a team of, you know, still relatively junior employees. And that's here. It's not evenly distributed yet, but that's happening. Um, I would bet next year that in some limited cases, at least in some small ways, we start to see agents that can help us discover new knowledge or can figure out solutions to business problems that are kind of very non-trivial. Um, right now, it's, it's very much in the category of, okay, if you've got some like 
repetitive cognitive work, we can automate it at a kind of a low level on a short time horizon. And as that expands to longer time horizons and higher and higher levels, you know, at some point you get an AI scientist, uh, an AI agent that can go discover new science, and that will be kind of a significant moment in the world. So agents are getting better at handling longer, more complex tasks. And Altman believes this could eventually lead to agents that can make novel discoveries. One of the best illustrations of this comes from a study by METR, which tracks the length of tasks AI can complete over time. They found that task duration is doubling every seven months, meaning agents aren't just getting better, they're also working for longer. So why does this matter? Well, think about it. Eventually, these agents could operate for days or even weeks at a time. That means businesses might soon be able to hand off entire projects, things that used to take teams of humans months, to a single agent. And according to Sam Altman, this is actually a lot closer than we think. The models over the next year, two years, are, are going to be quite breathtaking. Um, really there's a lot of progress ahead of us, a lot of improvement to come. And like we have seen in the previous big jumps, you know, from GPT-3 to GPT-4, businesses can just do things that totally were impossible with the previous generation of models. And, and so what an enterprise will be able to do, we talked about this a little bit, but just like give it your hardest problem. If you're a chip design company, say go design me a better chip than I could have possibly had before. Um, if you're a biotech company trying to cure some disease say, just go work on this for me. Like, that's not so far away. Uh, and these models' ability to understand all the context you want to possibly give them, connect to every tool, every system, whatever, and then go think really hard, like really brilliant reasoning, and come back with an answer, and, and have enough robustness that you can trust them to go off and do some work autonomously, like, that, that I don't know if I thought that would feel so close, but it feels really close. All right, now this is where the conversation starts to get really interesting. Sarah Guo asks Sam Altman two big questions. How does he define AGI today? And how far away does he think we are from reaching it? His response is a bit long-winded, but he does reveal quite a bit. I think if you could go back to most people, if you could travel back in time just five years, 2020, let's say. Uh, it's like the dark ages for AI, though. Actually, that's a very interesting time, because I, th I think that was, if we could go back exactly five years, I may get this wrong, but I think that was just before we launched GPT-3. Okay. So the world had not yet seen right. like a good language model. And if you could go back to that moment and show someone ChatGPT today, to say nothing of Codex or anything else, but just ChatGPT, uh, I think most people would say that's AGI for sure. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so we're great at adjusting our uh, expectations, which I think is like a wonderful thing about humanity. Um, I think mostly the question of what AGI is doesn't matter. It is a term that people define differently. The same person often will define it differently. Um, the, the thing that matters is the rate of progress that we have seen year over year for the last five years should continue for at least the next five, probably well beyond that, but hard to say. And whether you declare the AGI victory in 24 or 26 or 28, um, and whether you declare the superintelligence victory in 28 or 30 or 32, is way less important than this one long, beautiful, shockingly smooth exponential. Um, all of that said, to me, a system that can either autonomously discover new science or be such an incredible tool to people that our rate of scientific discovery in the world like quadruples or something, um, that, would, that would satisfy any test I could imagine for an AGI. Some other people would say it's got to be a system capable of self-improvement. Plenty of people would say like ChatGPT with memory today, very AGI-like. So he throws out some timelines there, 2026, 2028 for AGI, and 2030 and 2032 for super intelligence. And for him, the AGI moment is when we have a system autonomously making scientific discoveries, or just accelerating scientific discovery in general. 
But he also mentions that the definition of AGI doesn't really matter. What really matters is the exponential progress curve we're currently on. And he of course doesn't expect that to end anytime soon. Now finally, toward the end of the interview, Sam Altman lays out his long-term vision for what ChatGPT and future AI models might actually become. It's less about features and more about rethinking the entire concept of what an AI assistant is. Take a look. The framework that I like to think about, this is not something we're about to ship, but like the platonic ideal, is a very tiny model that has superhuman reasoning capabilities. It can run ridiculously fast and one trillion tokens of context and access to every tool you can possibly imagine. And so it doesn't kind of matter what the problem is. It doesn't matter whether the model has the knowledge or the data in it or not. Like the model, using these models as databases is sort of ridiculous. It's a very slow, expensive, very broken database. But the amazing thing is they can reason. And if, and if you think of it as this reasoning engine that we can then throw like all of the possible context of a business or a person's life into, and any tool that they need for that physics simulator or whatever else. That's like quite amazing what people can do. And I think, you know, directionally we're headed there. So yeah, that's the vision. A smarter, smaller, faster model with access to every app, every tool, and all of your data. And the ability to reason across all of it in real time. Basically, a full-on operating system for intelligence. I truly can't even imagine what the world would look like if everyone had one of these. But it definitely feels like we're heading there, and faster than most people realize. Anyway, that wraps up this breakdown of Sam Altman's talk. But I'm curious, are you guys excited about where this is heading, or kind of freaked out by it? I mean, do you think this vision of an all-knowing, all-connected AI system is what people actually want? Or is it maybe a step too far, especially considering that OpenAI or whoever builds it could have access to all of that data too? So let me know your thoughts in the comments. And if you enjoyed this breakdown, make sure to drop a like, subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, I'll catch you guys in the next one.